take a look at the markets yesterday. So we talked about uh, we talked about the breakout, big breakout yesterday it was 51, uh, 41, 57 and three quarters. Uh, this was an order block or a supply line that needed to be broken, and we talked about how there'd be major possible upside or upside move, which had happened. Uh, we want to keep in mind also that uh, 22 and three quarters, I've got nothing below me below that also. Remember, we did pass videos on these lines before. Uh, basically what an order block is, and I want to go review this real quick so you understand how important these lines are when I talked about how this would be a breakout. And we talked about this at 8.30 in the morning. So you had 8.30 to 12.30, so four hours heads up before that even broke out. And it was a big breakout, 57 and three quarters all the way to 80 into the close. You know, we're, we're talking about, uh, what, 23 point move to the upside. But what an order block is, is where you get, and how these lines are generated, that's where you get a big move up. Um, we had this on a larger, uh, these lines are generated on a larger time frame. And let's say you get a big move like this. So what happens is, is from the origination of the, the origin of where this started, is you get a small candle before that say here so um, I'll put a candle actually so what happens is you get a big hard move up and that's when you're gonna see these fresh ones form you'll see fresh ones form is because you see a big giant move up this is a big move off of this 31 and 50 that was a previous order block um, so you'll see a big move up then you'll see another big move up then you'll see another big move up on these larger time frames. So you can literally go back and look at 30 minutes, 60 minute, 120, 250, 240 minute charts. And you can see that when you get that big move up, that is where you see an institutional push or there's a big push where uh, these algorithms or what have you, these professional institutions, banks, et cetera, try to push the market really hard. Well, they can't fill all their orders at one time because the market would be uh, inefficient. So this causes an inefficiency in price. And when there's an inefficiency in price, you see this, you see this big giant move on this, even the Rico bar, that's an inefficiency in price. So what happens is, is for the origin of the order block, which would be here, those lines will form. Now what happens is if they can't fill, if there's an inefficiency in price, you can't fill all the contracts they wanna fill. This is what's called a retest. They retest that and then you see this big explosion for continuation. So that essentially is what supply and demand is, how these lines are generated. Um, they're, they're essentially order blocks. I call them supply demand lines to make it easy for traders. So I don't want to confuse traders. But all order blocks are, they're an inefficiency in price where the market moves hard off one direction, either upside, downside. Uh, that creates future support and resistance for further plays off of it. So at 8.30 yesterday, I was on the microphone. I said, hey, that's a big order block because I went back I showed you where that was, uh, the origin of this one was a huge run in the market, uh, a huge drop in the market, I'm sorry. Um, so if it broke that level, that would be a big level to play off of. Now, when we break, we want to try to get into only two setups. The setups we like to look at and getting is, is we like to get into our momentum and FZR trades. We had a couple full zone retracements there. But... What we try to do then is we try to get this off here. So here was an order block yesterday. This is at 8 o'clock in the morning, and this is 1 o'clock in the afternoon. This is a beautiful textbook setup that you want to emulate in our trading room. This is what I went over yesterday for about an hour on the, on the, on the microphone, and this is I went over in several conference calls. Now, we do have uh, two ways to do this. We have the indicator where this fires an automated audible sound when this fires off. Audible sound will go on your computer and that arrow fires off. Um, and then it fires off on these smaller Rinko bars also. You can put any Rinko bar size you want. We like the Uni Rinko bar. Um, I like the 120 20. Um, that's, a, that's a nice little uh, Rinko size I like to use. And then um, there's an Uni Rinko bar over here, which is a smaller one, which is a 113 13. But I'm going to show you no matter if you trade off of a smaller Rinko or a larger Rinko, it's the same type of setup. So what we want to do, and I went over yesterday with this, like, like an hour, and we went over several conference calls like this, is 
we want to push through this order block, right? We want to see price push through this order block because that's major resistance. So um, and it just doesn't matter what market you trade. A lot of traders don't log into the, the, the training room here because they don't trade the S&P. But we got traders that trade Bitcoin. We got traders that trade, uh, you know, all the way down to corn and soybeans, all the way to, you know, whatever it is, you know, indexes, whatever this is, stocks, it doesn't matter. It's universal. The order block creates major support and resistance in the past. So, I mean, the future because of the past uh, inefficiency in price. So when you get through that inefficiency where it was in price before, which, which is our supply line, so this is our supply order block, you have a setup. You have a setup where you want to look for only two setups. We only have two setups in the room to look at. And this is every single day will be the same exact setup. Here's your supply line, supply line slash your order block. We're looking for the same setups today. I'm going to go over the levels here in a second. There we go. So that's the supply line order block. So when you get that resistance, you know that if you start pushing through it, if we start pushing through that level, we're looking for what? A retest because the inefficiency in price, right? So the market's got to be orderly. So what they'll do is they'll push you through these order blocks. And we went over this yesterday. And they'll look for a retest of the order block and then they'll just drive price. We'll try to drive it. Now, how can, we, how can we have a high probability that they're going to follow through and drive price to the upside? Well, this is where our zones come in. I have a really shallow zone. We went over this in several conference calls. I went over this yesterday. This is my shallow zone right here. So this is my shallow zone. Oop, make a little circle. So all the way up is my shallow zone. If price is above the shallow zone, and you get this oscillator to do exactly what I'm going to tell you here in a second. That's called what a, what's a momentum setup. So this is called a bull mo. This is a bull momo. So the first setup. Oh, get my fingers right here. So this is a bull momo setup. What a momo is is momentum. So we know if there's an order in insufficiency and this and we're looking for price to drive higher on the retest, then how can we confirm it with my oscillator below? How we can confirm it is there's a bull momo setup right here. That's that guy right there. All right, that arrow. So that is a bull momo setup. All right, what we can do is when we push through the order block, we know this is past supply or resistance where the market had moved hard off of, so it's going to be major resistance. You start closing above a wrinkle, we push through. Once you see the first red candle that starts printing, you have what's called a retest. Now the retest is a retracement. So what we're going to look on the retracement, and we went over this yesterday, and I called that trade before it it shot up at 30, uh, 38 and three quarters. I said, we're at the bull run. If it holds, we're looking for a run. And what was our target? Our target was 38 and three quarters. And our next target, I said, was 44 and a half. It hit that and it actually went higher. It hit as high as what? It kept moving higher all the way up to 80. But I'm going to show you where that or the, uh, the origin started from and how that was a bull moment set up as I walked you through it yesterday before it happened. So this is the same thing. Here's your bull, bull setup. Well, down here, which this should be green. Sorry, did that yesterday. So if we look here, I have four lines, okay? An extreme level of 20, extreme level of 80. So red 80, the solid line, green level of 20. In between there, I got a level of 40, and I got a level of 60. So... How can we tell that this has momentum? How can we tell this is a bull momo setup? As the market retraces and gets through the supply order block, we know that we are in a breakout level. I went over these levels, and I go over these levels every day, these supply demands or order blocks. So when we go get through it, the first red bar comes up. We are retracing. Watch your oscillator. 
this has happened yesterday on that on that big move up that started this whole move up yesterday that we walked through before it happened. As we move down, I said if this can hold above 40 or right at 40, and it did, it kept just a little bit below yesterday, right on it, and we had a green reversal bar. Then a green reversal bar happens and the arrow fires. I said look for upside and look for 44 and a half as our first target from 38 and three quarters. Sure enough, yesterday, which I'll show you in a second, 38 and three quarters, it exploded. Same thing yesterday afternoon, it's the same exact setup. The setup came in and we stayed above 40. So the 40 is the bull. 40 is the bull. You want to stay above the bull on a retracement. So as the oscillator comes back, this will show underlying strength. So now the oscillator stayed above, so that's our first setup. Our first setup that we always try to emulate every day is called the bull momo. That's a bull because it's above 40 on the pullback. You get an arrow prints, and the fill would have been the highest bar unless you do like I say, backfills. You can usually on Rinko bars backfill half of that candle. I like going four ticks back. So uh, if you went at the ask, it's 71 and a half plus or minus maybe one tick. Or you can get down to that 60, what, 69 three quarters on a retracement. Right there is a good fill. If you do hot keys and do, you know, when this turns green, have your hot key on. Do minus four ticks because Rinko bars like to retrace. They usually don't take off right away. But Depending, let's just say you get filled at the high here, 71 and a half. Your potential on that move was 79. All right, so let's just say 72, you got a bad fill. You know, that's a seven point S&P point move. Seven S&P point move right there. And that's called a bull momo setup. Then the market comes down and what do they do? They fill more order flow. They fill more order flow because remember, these institutions, banks, or what have you, they can't fill everything on this first push. So what happens? FZR trades, a beautiful thing about FZR trades, they like to retrace them. This happened actually this morning also. It came in and now, so that's a bull momo because look at the oscillator. The oscillator stayed above 40 as it got an arrow. If we get a deep retracement into this zone, now this is called the FZR zone. This is a danger zone for momentum. Momentum is dissipated if you get into this zone. There's no longer momentum. Momentum is where you stay above my shallow zones and you get the air that prints because of the oscillator stays above 40 on buys or stays below 60 on sells. But what happens if you get a deep retracement into this zone, this deeper zone, this is our shallow retracement where we like to see the oscillator hold. We want to see this oscillator hold this, but once we get into a deep retracement, these uh, zones are very, very accurate. Look, I'm on a week-to-week -week basis. Those who lease the program, you'll see how accurate they are. It's stop price again. So we stop price right into the zone. Why? Because this is where the order block is. Order block, block creates natural resistance. I just went over and said they'd like to push it originally, come back and test this order block, level which it did, and then drive price. So if you get inside of the FZR and you just push through a Momo order block, and you come back inside the FZR again, this is what's called the second setup we look for. It's called an FZR or a full zone retracement. A full zone retracement is where the market is fully retraced. And it does not want to break that retracement or you're going to get a trend change. And we do not want that to break if we're buying. If it turns red, we're only shorting. If it's green zones, we're only buying. That's called an FZR. So that's the only two setups oops, that we need to look at on a daily basis. Nothing else. Because all everything's tied into that zone already. All right? That zone is already tied in to where the market should retrace out of. All right? So the second one is called a full zone retracement. Let me show you how we enter full zones, and we'll take a look at price action here because we're starting to move here a little bit, get some setups. Move it a little smaller. So that's the second setup we look for. is called the full zone retracement. I should make that make it the same.
All right, so the second one's called a full zone retrace. First is the bull momo setup. You get an arrow through the order block, retracement, stays above 40. That's a buy. Well, we're not looking to stay above. When we get into this, this zone, so this is the shallow zone up here, right? So that's our shallow zone right here. Oh, look at this guy. This is our shallow zone, right? So the shallow zone is there. That's our shallow zone. That's where we're looking for Momo setups where the oscillator stays above 40 for buys or below 60 for sells, right? So that'd be a bear up here if it was in the downtrend. But what happens when you get into this zone? When you get into this zone, you're looking for an FCR. Now we're looking for an FCR because it's a deeper retracement. So how can we enter here? Well, you see the oscillator gets below the bull, right? So now for the SDR, you want to get below 20 and come back through 20 for your buy. So an aggressive entry was is that the oscillator gets back through 20. We want to buy there. A more conservative entry, let it come right back through the bull if you want to do that. A lot of traders like to do it right when it cuts right through 20 and they put their stop two ticks below the swing. There would be your stop. Or if you missed that one, here would be your entry here also. Oscillator comes right back through 20. Your stop is still two ticks below the swing low. Or this one in the FCR, there's your entry. Oscillator comes right through 20. And there's your FCR still. If you take that one, your stop loss would be two ticks below that swing low. All right, so that's called an FCR. So that's a difference in trading. That's a bull momo setup, and that's a full zone retracement. All right? So make sure you understand that if you do not, if you only want to trade momentum. Hey, Paul, good morning. If you're only looking to trade momentum, because this is a, almost an eight-point move here. Yesterday, when I went over it before it happened, that's an FCR. Yesterday, before it happened, let me show you on this other chart. We were going over this. We're going over the bull, the, the zones. If you get a push, if you get a push up, we went over the chest day. This is called, so we know the bull is down here, right? So we know the bull had a huge buy signal in the afternoon right here. So let's go the let's, let's go these bull retracements right here right now. And this is how you can time the market. If you only want to trade momentum, period. My, we only have two setups, FZR, full zone retracements, and momentum. Only trading momentum setups. If you only want to do that, you must have a couple key ingredients. And now this works really good on the NASDAQ futures too because you've got to have this match up like this. NASDAQ's really fast, but it really works well with this concept, this methodology. If you only want to trade momentum, then here's a momentum setup. This is a momentum setup. This is a momentum setup. This is a momentum setup yesterday. It was just crank and trade for three hours in a row. Yesterday was a really dynamic day of trading in the afternoon. Why? Why are these all momentum setups? Well, the first ingredient you must have is you got to be with your zones. Trade in direction of color of zone is number one. And be above, this is just doing momentum, not FCR, just momentum, and above. Gosh, my fingers aren't working today. Above shallow retracements, or shallow zones. So that's the first thing, the first character, characteristic you must have. You have to do this. You have to trade, if you're going to trade this methodology according to how this system is designed, how this algo is, is getting these setups, why it's firing these trades. It's firing these trades because number one, you got to be in the direction of the colors of the zone. Here's zone green. Here's zone green all the way up. 
because there's a lot of ingredients in these zones. You know, you're talking about all these different combinations of ingredients that make these zones work. And so that's the reason you want to stay in the color of the zone or your counter trend trading. And we don't want to counter trend trade. We want to buy high, sell higher. We want to short low, sh uh, short or, or buy lower. To me, you know when a novice trader says, I like to buy low, sell high. I've never seen a trader buy low, sell high or sell high, buy low. It's, it's impossible to get this exact bottom or exact top. But what you can do is with oscillators and zones and indicators, you can pro project if the market has momentum or the momentum is dissipated. So how we can do it is this. Well, here's our shallow zones. Let's go. Here's our red zone. We don't want to, we don't want to trade against that. But, so what we do is this. Here's our shallow zone all the way up. Price is above it, meaning we are trending. We are in momentum, right? Trend up here, and we have momentum here. Okay? Now, we know if it gets in this zone then, below it is we're looking for FZRs, not momentum. So if price starts closing in here, it's a full zone retracement, right? So we're looking for this oscillator to pull us in down here through 20 or down through 80. But if you're strictly going to trade momentum, you need one to stay above the shallow zone. Number two. If it's red, you need to stay below here then, okay, this shallow zone. Two, if you're trading momentum, you made your, your entire day just in, the, in the, those three hours of trading just here with these setups. Two, you must, price must be above bull line below, meaning your, your oscillator below. So two, you want to be above this oscillator. Yeah, Gerald, give me about five minutes. I'll wrap this up. Price must be below above this oscillator. So when we turn green here, am I above the shallow retracement? Yes. When I got a red reversal bar, and back to green, this arrow fired, your audible alert on your computer fired here. That's a buy setup. Why? Look at your oscillator. Your oscillator even told you possible minimums coming in because look when it trend, you had a trend change, red to green. Look at your oscillator. It stayed above 40 bull. But the next one is called an extreme low mode. And I showed you this on market replay on our automated algorithm. I love these on the automation. Extreme momos. They're extreme blow-off rallies or sell-offs. Extreme momo. Why is it extreme? Because I'm above now 80. Here's your bull. Just staying above 40 is strength. That is strength, okay? It when it's green. That is strength by itself. But what happens is if you stay above 80. You are an extreme bullish position. The market, the price should follow to the upside. You should see an acceleration in price, and this is where you want to let your runners run. So there's your bull, and it goes right to an extreme bull. Extreme bulls are the most powerful trade. Extreme bears, extreme bulls, if you are into a shallow zone. They are absolutely powerful. Look at this move. Here's your extreme bull. Because the oscillator pulled back when the arrow fired, audible alert fired, that price was 38 and three quarters. This is what we talked about yesterday. This is a trade we set up yesterday. 38 and three quarters and the high, I said it would go to 44 and a half. It actually blew through that, went to 48. But I had it up here as a first stop of 44 and a half here. Right there is my target. So then it comes and we get a trend change again, down, no setup. Then we get into an extreme momo again. Why? I got a green is up, meaning we're only buying. It's a shallow retracement. It's above my shallow zone. And I have an extreme momo. It's pegged. I call it pegged above 80. That is a heck of a buy. Arrow fires. It turns red. Retracement. 
Aerial fires. Your fill is the highest bar, plus or minus one tick. If you buy in the ask or buy the bid, what have you, 47 and a quarter. That move got as high as 79.80, almost 30 S&P points, and your stop is two ticks below the swing low. If you missed that one, no worries. This is a bull run. Look at the bull. There's your bull. It's not extreme bull. Extreme bull is above 80. It stayed above 40. It might above my shallow retracement. This is what's called a bull. Not an extreme bull. That's above 80. This is just a regular bull. But still, nice trade. There, the high of that bar. Looks like the worst case scenario, plus or minus one tick. 66 all the way to 79, 78 and three quarters. So you're talking about 12, 13 point possible potential run on that one also. But look how the bull kept you in it on the oscillator. Now you can do this, the conference call, go over tonight with Gerald sending an update. You can do the automation like this on whether time frames you want with the trailing stop, with entries and stuff like that. Traders, a lot of traders will probably use it to manually enter or some traders can do automation if they want. It's totally up to you how you want to do it. Um, We'll go over that tonight in the conference call on how to capture these bull and bear runs. Then the next one comes up. This is a pullback. It's above, it's above the zone, but it's below my oscillator before it turns green. That's not a buy. And then we get one blow-off rally, which is still a nice trade. That was uh, 75 and a quarter up to 79, almost three and three quarters, four points, 16 ticks on that last run. Why? That's a bull also, not extreme bull, but that's a bull run also. And now you can see that's that's a criteria you need. You need to see those characteristics. So the third one is you want to see a confirmation bar get you in. Would we'll be the green uh, pulling bar for buys, red pulling bar for sells. We want confirmation bar to be green for red retracement. and to hold the bull below. So as we retrace, you know, when I walked you through that uh, uh, live trade yesterday before it happened, you know, the oscillator held 40 and the market just exploded, right? So it's just, that's what you got to do. You, if you're going to put yourself in a position of momentum, if you strictly want to be a momentum trader, that's the characteristics you need. And then, of course, your stop is two ticks below the swing low. And then as you move your stop, you can move your stop up. So what a lot of traders like to do, let's say they enter this right here, right? Let's say they enter this, the arrow, auto bull alert fires. It fires. You're in your bull. You're above your shallow retracement. So your entry's here. What they'll do is they'll put their stop two ticks below the swing low. Here and the micros work the same way. This is the micros. Here's your micro, two ticks below the swing low. As price moves up, the rule of thumb, every two bars that moves, you can just move up one bar, right, right at the low. Every two bars that moves, you just keep moving it up, move it up, move it up, move it up, move it up until you get to your first off. Uh, you can have, you can do automated, the automated ninja trader has the automated uh ATM, you can do that also, but a lot of traders that manually trade will do that. Let's say they get into this buy here, they'll just manually keep moving up. If it's a green bull run, they'll just keep moving the stop up two bars back, keep moving their chart trader up. So if you like doing chart trader manually, you just keep moving it up, right? You do it that way. And then when, once you get up into where you're up, you know, if you're up in like, like this, you're up 10 points, 15 points. You can loosen up to four bars back, which a lot of traders like to do. You know, once you get over that 10-point run um, or what have you, or a five-point run, whatever, and you can do that. So 